welcome once again. I uh, see we do have someone that can hang up if you'd like. That way we can get some type of a full picture. Um, let's see. And we, what we'll do is record it. It's already being recorded, it looks like. Okay. So we've been recorded, hopefully. All the signs on the dashboard in the case that we are being recorded. So with that said, although we have no video, but with that said, let's uh, let's get started. We're gonna have a good time tonight. This is night eight of our Feast of Tabernacle observance. Night eight, the final night according to the law of our Feast of Tabernacle, 6007. The 70th tabernacle from the time it landed. And for today's date and time, first our, our solar calendar, we recognize as the 22nd day of the seventh month. We're now at sundown. The 22nd day of the seventh month of our year 6027. And According to the Gregorian calendar, it is known as Thursday, Thursday evening, October 3rd, October the 3rd, as in the third day, 2024. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're going to do some more revelations and reveal some more secrets tonight. It being that it is. The eighth night, not the final night, it's just the night. There's nothing final at the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. It's just the eighth night. So we're going to get started by first encouraging you, as we always do, to break out your study tools, which starts out with the King James Version of the Holy Bible, the 1611 Authorized Edition, King James Version. And along with your Strong's Exhaustive Recordings by James Strong, your Synonym Finder, a dictionary or two, set of encyclopedia, and most importantly, most importantly, we're going to ask you to write and take notes. Now, we're going to have a writing exercise and all, and all of you to follow along with us. We are encouraging you to write something or a few things. Write. It's not going to be difficult if you're familiar with writing in the English as idiom. It's going to be writing in English. We're not going to drop a bomb on you and ask you to write or draft in Hebrew or Hebraic. Hebraic characters, just what you're familiar with. Besides, the King James Version Bible is printed in English. And we're going to point out to you as we, before we get started writing, we're going to point out to you what my uh, mentioned during an interview in our temple, but we were right here in the same city where he was from 1979 to 1992. Same county. City known as Miami of Florida. East Coast of the United States, the 27th state to become a state to join 26 already that was colonized. Florida became the 27th until they now have today 50, 48 that are conjoined, a mass of lands so that are conjoined together from border, a uh, state border, state border to state border, 48. And of course, Hawaii and Alaska were stolen and joined later. Praise your old. Praise your old. In the meantime, that's where we are in Miami, Florida. And we're not too far away from where the temple sat and still sits there. Just a few blocks away, it still sits right there. <laughs> oh, 60 seconds. 60, 62 Street. 
62nd Street, right here in Miami. We're on 51th Street. That's about 11 blocks away. About 11. Okay. So I'm going. We're going to show you a, a video. We're going to go to YouTube and show you a. That was recorded in 1986 in the Temple of Love. And, you know, off of who at the time was only known as Yahweh, Ben Yahweh. That way, when we write some English letters and words, you're going to be able to follow us when you learn how each letter is a word scientifically, each word composed of letters in English, right? So go to YouTube for a moment. <coughs> and uh, let's see how we can blend that in with tonight's revelations. Fulfill the word and become. You have it? Okay. Make sure you get a nice clear screen. Yeah, someone, I uh, know so see someone's now is calling back in. We don't want to lose too much screen. So, what we're going to do. Since it's been recorded, we want the person to know who's calling in that when we use our conference line recording and when someone calls in, we lose a lot of the video. So let us give them a number to call that they can still be joining with us on online. They can still hear. You put them on speaker. All right. So let's give them another number to call in so we don't lose this full screen because I believe that we're going to eventually download this on YouTube and Facebook and we want to get a full screen as we do that so let's see if we can encourage the person to call who's on the line now to dial in another number to give them another number to call so we can maintain our full screen That means you can call you back, put them on speaker, and they can hear. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, <coughs> okay, now let's play that video. It's a video interview. It was recorded by some Time subscribers from New York, from the New York State of New York, back in 1986 of Time Magazine. And what you're about to see is about 27 minutes into the video, or the interview, should you prefer, of them interviewing and asking questions, being directed toward Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So let's hear what others cannot hear and why we're here today. Some under the impression that he pour out his spirit on everyone before he left and that's how we're going to be able to return back to our land by the power of his spirit that he poured out on all the souls how's that okay go ahead and play that and put the phone let those who are calling in they can still hear my voice but the best news that we're going to have for you is being recorded you'll be able to see the video a full shot so you're not losing anything you're gaining you know, you'll be able to stop it and rewind it and play it back again and pause it again and learn and follow it. So play that. I have come and worked a miracle among these pitiful ignorant people. You look at a pitiful ignorant group of people. You know it. Well, I'm speaking of their former selves. That's what I'm speaking of. They're not even them. But in that former state, I, I confess that I was. I know it was more ignorant than me. That was a typical case. Stop being ignorant. Y'all raised me up. I started teaching seven years ago. If, that, if you want a time frame, I started teaching here in Miami all alone. Totally alone. Here in Miami, I was uh, despised. Okay, now you just heard him say during the interview, she asked a question. 
then my Ab, Ab, of course, that is my Ab. Ab, Aleph Beth in Hebrew means father. It's Aleph Beth. You can find that in your strong concordance on the H1. Ab, Aleph Beth, father. My Ab told them, after she asked the question, that he started teaching seven years ago of the date, to date of the interview. When you do your math, and I'm not very good at it, I'd be the first to tell you I'm not good at math at all, but I'm going to go back seven years from 1986, and I believe I'm going to land on 1979. That would make it seven years. And that's what he was telling her. So now we're right in on time, right in sequence with the interview. Don't get lost now. We're going to pause from time to time because we want to make sure that you hear everything that was said that day what was left on record and the hints that he was given those back then on what to follow today. And here we are the eighth night of the Feast of Tabernacle, 2024 from 1986 of our year 6,027 solar time. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's like 38 years later, 1986. It's 38 years ago. I told you, my math is not good. I do need a little help one from time to time with my math. All right. 38 years ago, this has been recorded in his office. It's been interviewed. Not to forget to mention, it being that this is the year 2024, and according to the uh, Wikipedia and other encyclopedias and news articles online, he supposedly died on May 7, 2007. Now let's go back to let's do some math again. I believe that would maybe be about 17 years ago this year, a little over 17 years. We're now in September, May. Right? Mm -hmm. That's like four four months ago, May. Mm -hmm. So that's a little over four months ago, 17 years and four months ago, he ascended. And my people who are following the wrong organizations in plural, the wrong camps in plural, the wrong groups in plural, the wrong men, in plural, men of their own precepts, according to Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13, are leading his sheep astray. They are following false shepherds, just as prophetically prophesied and promised that it would be done today by thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers are what? Money. All because of money. Filthy lucre. Money. Money. The love of it is the root of all evil. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And although the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 53, you have sold yourselves for naught. You shall be redeemed without money. And I believe I'm also correct when I say that at this very moment tonight, October 3rd, will begin another feast of another organization that created their own feast to begin tonight, October 3rd. That means that'd be, that'd be their own feast of tabernacle, or tabernacles in plural. But what I cannot comprehend or understand is how could they be observing the Feast of Tabernacles and they don't have the tabernacle there? Mm -hmm. I mean, and they don't even know the meaning of the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. When my Abba said, he led them to believe that it was when we dwelt in booths in the wilderness. But if they had, if it was a such thing as common sense, they couldn't wake up the common sense to realize that we could not have lived or dwelled in booths for eight days 
when we was in the wilderness for 40 years. Let that continue. I just had to pause for a moment. We're going to do it from time to time. I'm going to bring to your attention the truth. Let it, let it play on. I was rejected. I was hated. I was spat upon. You can read that for yourself. I don't have to open the book and read it for you. In John chapter one, uh, it states that in the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. And it goes down to tell you that the word would become flesh and dwell among men. I am that flesh and I'm dwelling among you today. Then it goes on to tell you that I would come to my own people from whom I'm born and that they would receive me not. Though I'm in the world, though the world is made by me and I'm in the world, yet the world knows me not. So the world has to come into the knowledge of me. So that for that reason, I'm rejected. I was rejected and despised by my own people that fulfilled the scriptures. Totally, I have lived that. Then, after I demonstrate my persistence, that I would be rewarded with those who would come into the knowledge and who would be believed and be redeemed. And that's what I'm doing. And of course, then the world will take notice through the work that I do. And I've lived that. I'm lived all that the word is. From Genesis through Revelations, I'm living it because I come in the volume of this book, all 66 of them. So you're speaking of books of New Testament and the Old Testament? Yes, and Revelations. And Revelations. But in the New Testament, you reject the uh, emergence of the Messiah. No, I am the Messiah that is prophesied. I am the Messiah of the New Testament. But the ones that talk about Jesus are not uh, are out of date or for. for uh, now you see at this point during this interview that the same scribe, the woman, is now inquiring about the deity in a different name, in the Greek's name, that this entire planet is waiting for it to come today. The most infamous deity for the past 2,024 years the most famous deity. And before, and you're gonna hear my obs in a moment, before it became known today by the J name, during his time, his days, and shortly after that, until the 16th century, <laughs> actually the 17th century, somewhere like 1635, he was known as Yahshua. Then when they added the letter J to the English alphabet along with V, then they changed it from Yahshua to Greek Esos and then Hazos. So let's uh let's hear what Moab says about this famous deity that the whole world's waiting for to come today. Who he was and is, who he still is, opposed to who they are asking about, who they're inquiring of now. Let it play. You see, Jesus, the man that is called, remember his name is Yahshua. Yeah. Yahshua was a disciple of John. John was the man. John was the prophet. The man. Okay. Now let's get this out of the way. It's made it clear that Jesus, remember, the man that is called Jesus, his name is Yahshua. Yahshua was a disciple of John. Is that what he said? So the Christ, in other words, the Christ and John were back there back in the days together, and John was teaching the Christ. 
He even he even beept as the Christ John did. Now, in a few moments as we as we resume, we hear my ob say that he John. He's known in the Bible as John, John the Baptist, or A. He puts a letter on. He puts the first letter of the English alphabet on it, A, or Alpha, in Greek. And then that would make the man who he taught that was called Jesus, that would make him B. So now we have A and B, almost like Olive and Beth, like Ob. Let's let's hear that. Oh, Jesus, when, when he was baptized, baptized had nothing to do with the water. Again, the scriptures are written figuratively, literally, in metaphors, similes, in prose, and in poetry, and full of allegories. So when you read of the man that was called Jesus being baptized and being put under water, then you would have to, I would have to teach you what baptized means. You have to break down the word baptized in all of its letters. To every word is scientifically composed of the letters. Okay. We're going to use this part to do our first writing exercise. He just said every word is scientifically composed of letters. And in a few moments after we're done with this video, We're going to show you and also compare it in the Bible who you are. I'm in a I'm in a room full of people. You may only see me on the video, it's being recorded. But I'm in a room full of people and we have some online. But I'm going to show you and reveal to you the mysteries of who you are as a soul and how you were here before with me. Your very soul was here with my soul before in the same body, the same clay, the same format of how your body was before. You have the same features. Your complexion may be a little different, but you have the same features that you had before. And you're not the only ones. In fact, everyone that's walking this planet today was here before. Even as far as recently. And that's how souls are preserved. See, the souls are preserved. And that's why the Christ said over 2,000 years ago, 2,024 years ago. Don't fear him or them that can kill the body. But you must fear him that can destroy both soul and body and hell. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 says, all souls are mine. But a soul is nothing that you cannot see a soul without the body. And we're going to go to it. But I repeat again, this may be a shock. But Everyone that's here with me today was promised to be back here with me today. Even the same Christ is here today. The same one is here today. And he was promised to come back in like manner. And you've seen him go up. The same Christ. Nothing changed. Except the time. You have, you have cell phones now. Didn't have cell phones and smart TVs and uh, tablets that you, you know, like they have today. And notepads, didn't have that back then. Electrical light bulbs, using lamps. So some things have changed, became more modernized. That means you paid a, you paid a ransom for your soul. Now you're gonna write that down, it's gonna be your first word. You're gonna write down ransom. R-A-N, R-A-N-S-O-M. From left to right, ransom. From left to right, R A N S O M. You got it? Yeah, got it? Now, to the bottom of that, you're going to write it in reverse. 
here's how you're going to write it. Follow my instructions. You're going to write S O M and do a little space. Then you're going to write R A. You got it? Now, after the M, you're going to put in the parentheses the vowel E, as in the East. And you're going to find out why we're here today and some are not here because some ran. Some ran away from here. Even back then, some ran. Ran right to Aaron. Ran right to Aaron, started worshiping the golden calf. Even as Aaron ran from here. It's not coincidental. I'm supposed to do that. Now, that's our first exercise. We pause right there. Each word is scientifically composed of letters. Each letter is a word. I just I just demonstrated it to you. I just gave you two words out of one. You thought was ransom. As some ran. And we're going to find out in the Bible in a minute. Let it continue. Our words within themselves. Every letter is a word. Like just a little bit if you can. Just a little bit. Just squeeze it just a couple inches back. So we can follow that flow. When, when he was baptized, baptized had nothing to do with the water. Again, the scriptures are written figuratively, literally, in metaphor, simile, in prose, and in poetry, and full of allegories. So when you read uh, the man that was called Jesus being baptized and being put under water, then you would have to, I would have to teach you what baptized means. You have to break down the word baptized in all of its letters. To every word is scientifically composed of letters that are words within themselves. Every letter is a word. So when you break down the word baptized, you have B, which follows A, and I am A. Alpha. B follows the series of A. And B is also the word B E, which comes into existence as a result of A. So Therefore, John was prophesying about A coming, which is the first in the series. And the second set of the word is A-P-T, meaning apt. Not to be apt. To be, that meant that the man was baptized by John, had to become clever, adroit, sagacious, etc., in the ism of John. And that made him an if. That's why he was called John the Baptist. So he too was, he came to be in the knowledge of Yahweh, and he then subsequently became apt in the isms, which is that dogma and the uh, laws of Yahweh. So since John was the one that was the prophet, then the man that was called Jesus was baptized by him. That made him a student and a disciple of John. Not the one. Now, make that clear. The one who you see in that video that's being interviewed was not the one. That was not the Christ. And my people are being led today and still being continually led today by a particular foundation to believe that he was the Christ or the Son of God, the Son of Yahweh. He was not. He even told them on numerous occasions that he himself is Yahweh in English. He said it in tapes, recordings. He lesson number five, he made it clear that he's Yahweh. Even the tabloids, the news articles, the news medias started calling him Yahweh in English. You had Wafe and the Tetragrammaton. He made that clear. Now, if you don't believe that, then the controversy that you have is not with us, it's with him, it's with what he said. Because you just heard him, you just heard him say that the man that's called Jesus was not the one who was God, who taught him. The one who is the one, even at that time, is John the Baptist that taught him. 
And let's just look at for a moment. Don't change the screen. One of you can go and read. Go to John, the book, John chapter one for a moment. You heard my object say in the beginning was the word, the word with Yahweh, the word with Yahweh. And we're going to show you in the next couple of verses that God sent himself down in another body to become John. Did you hear me? God came down as John, in another vessel. He's not bound to vessels. So although, and he had to do that incognito like that for the purposes of the Satan and his angels lurking the planet. Could you go to John chapter one? Mm -hmm. He already read verse one, read verse two. The, the same, same was in the beginning. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, continue. All things. The same was, read verse two. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay. Read, read on. All things were made by him. By who? By God. And without him was not anything made that was made. By who? God. Read this. Is that what it says? Yes. Read it. And without him was not anything made that was made. Okay. Now read the next verse. In him was life. Right. And the life was the light of men. Now what is the life that was in him? The life that was in him is the son, the only begotten of the bosom, the bosom, the son was in him. That was formed in two of Genesis. And then man became a living soul. That means God is the only one, the only man in existence that ever had a child that came out of his own loins and gave birth to a son without the aid of a woman. Why? There was no woman around yet. There was no woman. So how was the son born? And don't tell me nothing about no Mary. Mary had nothing to do with it. Why? Read your Bible, study it. It says in chapter one of Matthew that she was already with child as they got together. Immaculate conception. Read the next verse, John chapter one. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended they it don't, not. They don't comprehend the word of it. They can't understand nothing. Why? In darkness. And that's why some of my people, all of my people now, walking around the United States, living in a fantasy that God poured out his spirit before he left. The son did. The son, the Christ, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, poured out his spirit upon the, all flesh. And that's how you're going to be delivered back to your homeland, Judah. You are responsible for delivering yourself back home. Defying prophecy. And making God, turning God into a liar. Hmm. And all the books of the prophets that prophesied that you would be delivered by someone. That he would raise and teach as he is saying on this video. That's known today as the Christ. Yahshua. Right? In Appalachian. Okay. Read on the next verse. There was a man sent from God. See, this man that was sent from God came from heaven. Now, what other men do you know that came from heaven that was sent by God? Think of this for a moment. What man or angel that you know was sent from God? And here they have Yohanan here in the Bible. They got John with Yohanan. You need to know the meaning of Yohanan. Do you know the meaning of Yohanan? Do you know the meaning of Yohanan? That means that my ob is so powerful, so omnipotent, omniscient, that he created another vessel and put himself in it and came down to see what was going on with Judah in the United States today, although he landed in 1935 in Kingfish, Oklahoma. Came down to see what's going on with Judah. That way he would fulfill some more of Exodus chapter 3. I've come down, I've seen the affliction of what my people are going through. I came down to deliver them. I came down to see for myself. And I see it. I saw it. So now I'm going to deliver them, but I'm not going to deliver, deliver them myself. Look at your Bible. Check your history. Even Moses did not deliver them. Oops. Oops. Who delivered them? The same Yahshua he said he taught. Delivered them. And now you see here it says, in this Bible, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He had to do it that way, incognito, so the devils wouldn't know what's going on with strategy. 
And what, what did John do? What did John do? The same came for a witness. The same came for a witness of the light. And what? To bear witness of the light. I was right there. He came to bear witness of the light. And in 1992, after I wrote my book, and Tyler Beaker, he read it, edited it, and then he titled it, I Bear Witness of the Son, you and Wafe. Fulfilling John chapter one and verse what? Seven. Seven. Came to bear witness of the light. Because what? In verse eight. He was not that light. Who was not that light? John. John was not that light. But came to bear witness of the light. That what? That all men through him may believe? Read it. I'm not, I'm not reading. I'm just asking a question. But was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light. The true light. Because they thought my ob is the light. Now, they call my ob the light, and others followed them. My, they were following those who were calling my ob the light. But my ob was not the light. My ob came to bear witness of the light, which is the true light, because he knew that others would be following him as the light, which would not be the light. That makes sense. <laughs> and what? Which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Now, how could that be when my ob left in 2007? How would he be able to light all men that come after that? After in 2008, he actually left in 1992. That vessel was just still here, walking around. So that couldn't be fulfilled. Although they say he poured out his spirit upon them, that's how he lighted all men after that. He left his spirit in them, it just became the light. And they're supposed to light their minds. But how could that be when they're still walking in darkness? If my ob was the Christ, then he would light up all their minds and they wouldn't be in darkness today. That means they would know who I am. Does that make sense? But apparently they don't know who I am. They think I'm Mika. They have that right. That's what he called me. He called me Mika. He still does. He called me Mika in their face in 1979. Read on. What else it says? He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And they, because they think he's the son. They knew him not. They think he's Yahweh ben Yahweh. I think that's enough. The point has been proven. That for those who will accept it, that some is going to reject it. They're going to say, I don't care what he's saying. Yahweh ben Yahweh is the Christ. Read, let it play on. And when he attempted to assume the mantle of the one, he began to teach secrets that were not to be taught until the time of the one to come. He was 2,000 years, well, 19 years early. Did you hear that? That was the slip of a mistake. My ob said that at that moment for today. Here you have a recording that's being recorded and was recorded in 1986. He's telling the scribes of Time Magazine that he began to teach secrets, that he was not supposed to teach secrets. He was 2,000 years, well, 1,900 years too early. He was 2,000 years in 1986 too early. But what my was telling them was that when you look for the Christ to come, he would come after the year 2000. And although he was here in 2000, he was just released from prison in 2001. The exact date would be September 26th at sundown, 2001, which was the same day of the observance of the Feast of Tabernacles, September 26, 2001. And he came right to the city where you're supposed to come to observe the Feast of Tabernacle, Miami, from New York came right back to the same city. Oh. Let it play. And when he began to reveal the knowledge of who Satan was, John 8, 44, when he began to re reveal the knowledge of the son, the, the knowledge of whose right to who it was, he could not afford to be left alive. So for breaking the secret, for teaching the secret that he had learned in secret, he was killed by and that's why he was hung in his shorts without any clothes on because he was initiated in that manner. That's why his collarbone was broken and his head was hung to the side. You see? Because that's a sign that all men who study in secret understand quite well. I'm the only one to make that clear. Now you hear my art describe how the Christ was 
so so called place on the cross, although the Bible says and history says record says he was slew and hanged on a tree and not a cross. But there's a particular foundation that was created by him, and they've taken photoshops of my ob's face, placed it on a body with shorts on, and put that body on a cross. After they heard my ob figuratively say he was being crucified by judicial murder in U.S. courts, so what they did was put that vessel of artifacts with a Photoshop of his head being crucified on the cross as if he was the Christ being crucified on the cross. Not forget to mention that in January of 1992, he left another recording, which was an audio recording and made an announcement from jail, from being incarcerated, that he came down off the cross the night before, as he, before he made that recording. That he went inside his secret closet, reached in and the box and took out his holy garment. He took off to come and get us. We was taking out the box and putting it back on and sitting down and putting back on his holy garment and sitting on putting his holy starry crown and putting it on and putting it up in his right hand. We have that too. And they had it. They are ignoring it and they don't want you to know of it. Why? Because it would stop them from making money. If you heard it and you found out the truth, then it will stop you from sending your tithes into that foundation. Visiting them three times a year, feeding them money so they'd be able to pay their mansion bills, limousine bills, light bills, and food. Right? Although it's going to be kind of difficult now that the ships are not going to the port of Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico. A strike going on. And they're they're already at their third strike. Yeah. Speaking of striking out, let it play on. Until the Bible, Scripture is the basis. I am the Bible. I am the volume of this book. I have no statement outside of it. I'm the fulfillment of it. In other words, I'm the promised Messiah of the Old Testament, fulfilled in it. That's me. That's why up until this time, for 1900 years, he's been promised to come back, knowing full well that I have to come. The scriptures, if you interpret them that way, uh, foretell, foretold the death of the man called Christ. Did you see uh, such an end for you? Now here you see my uh, receiving them to protect his Christ that he taught, who at the time was not even around the temple. As he put his Christ out in the wilderness, this as prophecy said would be in Isaiah. One cry in the voice of one cry in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So in order to protect his Christ that he taught, he took on the role of the Christ in his face to protect him. And those who were back there in the temple with him, they couldn't take it anyway. Did he, did he deceive? Of course he did. He's the God of deception. He taught Satan how to deceive. He, If he was not a decept, this, the God of deception, then Satan would be God over him by deceiving him. Did you hear what I said? And how could Satan deceive God? So God must be the creator of deception in order to deceive Satan. That way he won't be on top of God. And that will explain the scripture in Isaiah where he says, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So Satan didn't create evil. My Ab created evil. He also created peace. And good. You got it. And bad. He also created bad. Isn't Satan bad? Yes, he is. So who created Satan? Uh, exactly. So now he's leaving. This is the male of the subject of the two. Oh, actually, more than two there. But not a male to ask a question. In his uh, appearance, his uh, existence on the planet today. Go ahead and uh, let that play. 
die, will you be persecuted? I'm being persecuted. If you be fatally persecuted, I cannot be fatally persecuted. I'm incarnate. You can't kill God. It doesn't matter about it does not matter at all about it. He just told them that he was promised to come back. Leading lead them to believe he's the Christ. But then he turned around and said, You can't kill God. I'm incarnate. I am incarnate, not the Christ. But uh, were they listening? The fact that the question is, were you listening? And how many times have you seen this interview on YouTube? Or how many times were you looking at it? Or the question should be, how many times did you hear it? Or were you just listening? Go back a little bit so we can flow right through to the end. And we're going to stop from there. We're going to stop there. Go back a little bit so we can pick it up. You be fatally persecuted. I cannot be fatally persecuted. I'm incarnate. You can't kill God. It doesn't matter about it. It does not matter at all about the next one. I mean, I chose to come in. And this is the next one. It's totally different. It's totally wrong. I'm a person. I am spirit. I'm true. Light. And I'm light. I'm the light. That light is all men that come into the world. Okay. I think that speaks for him. He speaks for himself. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that literally, he speaks for himself. Now go back to the internet. I'm going to join you. Go to your King James Version Bible. You, you wrote down a word, ransom, didn't you? Okay, go to your strong record and type in ransom. Just as you wrote it, R-A-N-S-O-M. <coughs> I mentioned a moment ago before the recording that every soul that's here today was here before. I said that? Yeah. Okay. And you see ransom occurs in the Bible. It's printed in the King James Version 13 times. You have it? Did you find it yet? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Now, what you're going to do, since you have it there, you see the first time in Exodus chapter 21, the, the meaning uh, comes with H6306, is that correct? Correct. Of ransom. And it takes you to, click on it, it takes you to redemption. And the etymology under 6299 Hebrew H takes you back right back to ransom or rescue or deliver or to allow one to be ransomed. Am I correct? Okay, and that is the only time that you will find that 6306 for ransom. Out of the 13 times, you will not see ransom again under that particular reference. H6306. The next five or six times. That'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next eight times out of the 12, you find H3724, is that correct? Yeah. And you find that in Exodus chapter 30. Now, before we look at the meaning of that, I want you to go to your Bible now and turn to Exodus chapter 30. And restart that verse 11, I believe it's going to be. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Now you see who's speaking to Moses. It said what? When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul for his unto what? the Lord, unto his soul. What was that ransom? 
they have you believe and they know that you have to give a give a gather a gather a gather like like a a, a penny a shekel <clears throat> go ahead read on let's see if that's there when thou numberest them that there be no plague among them when thou numberest them this they shall give what every one that passeth among them that are numbered hath a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty geras. See the geras. Now this was hidden in Revelation. That became part of a measure of wheat. That wheat is some other grain that I'm going to take you to, other than the grain that was found in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. That would be, just go to it for a moment. Go to your Bible and go to Revelation chapter 6. And read verse 6. You can start at verse 5. Read verses 5 and 6. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. Mm -hmm. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. A black horse, a black man with a lot of power, huh? He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. A pair of balances to balance the good and the bad. Right now, the bad is outweighing the good on this planet. Literally, the bad is outweighing the good on this planet. It's a tilted scale. A pair of balances in his hand. The pair of balances also, the Greeks picked up to mean a, a zodiac sign. That means this man who's sitting on this horse will be coming out of a womb during the time of that sign. Known as Libra. Also known as September. He would be also the, known as the Feast of Tabernacle. The be the Tabernacle. A pair of balances. The pair of balances also represents the time. It'd be Greek or Hebrew, both. The solar calendar and the Gregorian calendar. Okay. Now read the next verse. Read verse six. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Mm. So you have a measure of wheat for a penny. And what? What else for a penny? Or three measures. Of? Three measures of barley for a penny. So that's one measure. That would be wheat. The wheat would be those who have come back, as they left. They would be wheat. They would be grain. It would be a good grain. Wheat. That means this wheat would also be a, a type of complexion. Their skin brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although barley is also brown, this wheat, see, this wheat would be separated from the tares. Wheat from the tares. Barley is a part of the tares. You got it? Yeah. Okay, now go back to Exodus. And read the next verse. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above. From 20 years old and above. Shall give an offering unto the Lord. Right. Okay. Now, that's ransom. Yes. Okay. Now, go to the other, go back to your concordance and look at the other reference for ransom. They put in the 37, age 37, 24. And click on that and see what it takes you to. Price of a life. Okay. Price of a life. Right? Okay, don't go with the other meanings. The English and the Greeks put in the theologians to deceive the world. In order to get the full meaning of what this ransom is, you got to go to the Greeks. 
So go to Matthew chapter 20 and read verse 28. That means, see, Matthew and Mark, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, and Mark chapter 10, verse 45 is the same. That means Mark copied from Matthew. Read that. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, when you click on that ransom, click on it and see what it means. This is Greek. G3083. The price for redeeming. The price for redeeming. Also, number two, for what? The ransom of For the life. ransom of life. Right? Now look at that etymology under 3089. G3089. It says what? loose any person or thing tied or fastened that's what the greeks gave you is that right yeah, yeah. i mean the only way to get these is to put those two meanings together in hebrew and greek and then to go to isaiah chapter 43 so go to it so now what was it actually go hosea chapter 13. Here's the mystery to that uh, ransom that's found in Exodus chapter 30. And why I say you shouldn't have a plague, you don't, you don't have no plague. It was hidden in Hosea chapter 13. It's a supplement. I'm the only one that can tell you that. Read, I told you I'm full of secrets. He just told you that I was 2,000 years or 1,900 years too early. Read Hosea chapter 13, read verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. From the what? From the power of the grave. So you had to die. You was in the grave. You was in the grave. Bring, brought you right back from the grave. As they thought they all, those who were embalmed and placed in a tomb, like they did in Egypt. I will ransom them, them, from the power of the grave. And I would do what? Redeem them from death. Oh, you have got to be kidding. Are you serious? Is that what the Bible is saying? Mm -hmm. And from what else? Oh, death. Oh, death. Where is thy sting? <laughs> Grave, where's your victory? I will do what? Be thy plagues. See, he will be the plagues. Uh, uh, not the plagues of this country. That you receive not of her plagues. That's why you come out of her. Oh, grave what? I will be thy destruction. He's going to destroy the graves. And what? Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. That means you cannot repent without being a chosen soul that you paid a ransom over 3,500 years ago wow. to be here with me today. <clears throat> you see it? Go to, can I read First Timothy and go to chapter 2? Let's see what this is. Start at verse 1. First Timothy chapter 2. Start at verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Go ahead, read, verse, read, read on verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, mm -hmm. who will have all men to be saved. What, how many? All men. And really? to come. Go ahead. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Wait, you mean in order for them to come into the knowledge of the truth? There will be no truth out there. Mm -hmm. There will not be truth out there already. Mm -hmm. They have to come into the knowledge of the truth. And that's not a truth. Not truth. That's the truth. the truth. Read verse 5. For there is one God. How many? You sure your Bible is saying that? There is one God. That's what the Bible is saying? 
and I come from that same one God, one, one God with one mind, one heart, and one action move together. We both search our sheep and seek them out. Now we're right back in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11. One God, and what else? And one mediator. One between mediator between God and man. You have God above the planet that's full of men. And somebody must go to this planet to be the mediator between men and God to speak up for men to God that he don't destroy them all. Mm -hmm. That would be the same one that was raised by John. Mm -hmm. What else you have? The man Christ. Oh, that's who he is? <laughs> and what else? Who gave himself a ransom Wait, for all. He himself gave a You just read it in Matthew. Mm -hmm. He gave himself a ransom for all. And what else? To be testified in due time. Like, like, like right now. Read the next verse. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Read, read, read the next verse. I will therefore Eight. that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without the wrath, and doubting no doubting even the gentiles know this this is this timothy is coming from theologians the theologians of europe now you're getting the mystery oh you, you're not done i'm not done yet uh go now to i'm gonna read go to john chapter 14. you were here before you're not the only ones i'm gonna read john chapter 14. I told you we were here before. If it wasn't, I would have told you. What you mean? If you was not here before, so you don't know the mystery of that. Now I'm going to reveal the mystery the secret to that. I'm going to start at verse 1. John chapter 14. I'm going to see John. This is what John taught me to say. I'm going to read starting at verse 1. One. See, first of all, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Your heart let not be troubled. You believe in you believe in my you believe in God. You believe in God. See, this couldn't be God asking you to believe in God. This must be the Son saying to those that are with him, you, you believe in God, you believe in John then believe also in me. Memio, me. Believe also in me. I know where I come from, everlasting. I know where I come from. I come from where you come from. And you come from where I come from. Everlasting. So I reminded you that in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you that there are not many mansions. I would have told you there's not many mansions in my father's house. I would say that. I would also tell you where I come from, you can't go. Because you don't come from there. I would have told you I'm going someplace where you can't go because you don't, you're not from there. But I see here, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you into myself. That where I am, there you may be also. How could that be? Let that soak in for a moment. <clears throat> Do you see that? So how could you be there also if you'll be back with me in the last days? And if, as you read on, it's not the subject right now, but if you read on, you wonder, what's he talking about? How could that be? And when I go, you know, because you were there. And the way you know, ye, not you. And then here comes the dollars. Thomas said to him, I mean, Lord, we know not whether thou go. I mean, how can we know the way? I mean, we don't know what you're talking about. 
Well, you want to know something? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That means I'm the way, the door, hey. The way, wall. The truth, hey. And the life, yod. That's yod, hey, yod, hey, wav, hey, from right to left. Yod, hey, wav, hey, or hey, wav, hey, yod. There it is right there in the Bible. Tetragrammatar. You were here before. Go to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 15. <coughs> Let's see how this happened. <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to let you read. From verse 12, nice and loud, so the whole world can hear this on YouTube, Facebook, whatever social media that we decided to share it with. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Huh? Three. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. I, I hope you let this soak in. 15. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. Especially if your preaching is vain. If there's no resurrection of the dead. Hmm. Why? Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ. And we, he just said so himself in that video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who what? He raised not up. If so, that the dead rise not. I mean, if Christ don't rise, you cannot rise. The first begotten of the dead. Read verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then what? Then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. You hear this? Verse 18. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Perished, gone. Fallen what? Asleep. They thought you were dead. You just you just fell asleep. Mm -hmm. But your heart stopped and your brain was still going. That's what? That's where your soul is. Ob came in, my Ob came and got your this soul that belongs to him out of that body, that vessel, and preserved it to give you another body, the same one. Mm -hmm. Read. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Read on, keep reading. But now is Christ risen from the dead. When? Now. And what? And become the first fruits of them that slept. Wait, wait. How could he be risen from the dead, but then became the first fruits of them that slept and not died? You know what I'm saying? Yes. That slept and not died. Read verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go back up to 21. Let's not skip that. Read verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Now you see it? Now read 22. For as in, all, for as in Adam all die. How many die? All die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. What? 23. But every man in his own order. Every man in his own order would be made alive. You can't stop that. You can't prevent it from happening. With his own order. Even Christ the first fruits. Mm -hmm. What else? Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So we're looking for the first fruits. So who is Christ? They're looking for the first fruits. And why did Bob uh, call me Mika in 1979 for everybody? He must have known something. Pause here for a moment. Don't forget, this is verse 23. First Corinthians chapter 15. Go to Mika chapter 7. Mika. The book that's called Mika. The third, third book of the whole Bible, right in the middle. Go to Mika and read chapter 7, verse 1. Let's find out more with these first fruits. Woe is me. What? 
Woe is me. Uh huh. For I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits. Yes. As the great gleanings of the vintage. Uh huh. There is no cluster to eat. None. There's not a lot of people here at all. No cluster to eat. What is this? Uh, what? what? My soul, my, my what? My soul, do what? Desire the first ripe fruit. Oh, the first ripe fruits. It's all like the first fruits, but they got to be ripe, mm -hmm. living, alive, ripe, mm -hmm. ready to come back home to their God. Right. right. Now go back to First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. Read verse twenty-three over again. Now we know the first. Ripe fruits, the first fruits. See, the first fruits came in 1979 and 1990 with my arm. Uh, that's the first fruits. They came in the first ones to hear Yahweh, Yahweh, wear white and Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. The first fruits, that's the first fruits. They were his fruits. But I'm not into the first fruits. I'm looking for the first ripe fruits, those that are ripe and ready to be delivered, ready to be picked from the orchard. Mm -hmm. Ready to be harvested when during the feast of tabernacle, mm -hmm. the harvest, the end, the end gathering. Reverse twenty three again. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. At his coming, twenty four. Then come at the end. Wh what's going to happen after that? Then come at the end. What? Mm -hmm. When what? When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Reverse, read on. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. How many enemies? All enemies. Now, check out what this enemy is that was never revealed before. You've been reading it for years and years and years, but you didn't, you didn't get the comprehension. Now, tonight, I'm going to give you the comprehension. Read it. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That means I'm going to bring you back alive. Mm. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That means come back to life now. Mm. See, some thought that I'm going to destroy death and there'll never be any more death. Not so. That means you're already dead. So I'm going to destroy the death and bring, bring, bring you back to life. Wow. You got it? If that if that's what they thought, then I mean, no one no one will die today. No one will die after the night. Everybody live forever. So my enemy, that means my enemy kept you down, kept you dead, even mentally and spiritually. So I'm going to destroy that. I already have. Those who come to me, I would be def I would have defeated death, and I I even ask death, where's your sting? And great, where's your victory? Read, let's read, let's see if it's there. For well, he hath put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Read on. And when all things shall be due unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. Even himself can be subjected to what he put under himself. You hear that? Even the son is going to be subjected to what he put under himself. He him too must go under the, the, the same thing, going to go the same thing. That God may be all in all. That means he given all power uh, who always had the power mm -hmm. and always letting everyone know that his, his hob is the power. Mm -hmm. Read on. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? See? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Then that's what they're doing. Every Sunday, every time someone goes to the lake, goes to the beach, we're going to have Junior next week. <laughs> Just meet us at the beach, meet us at the lake. Ooh, a whole bunch of dead people standing in the water watching Junior get baptized dead. <laughs> that's if they don't drown him. Ooh. Read verse 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Read on. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in the cross of our Lord. I die daily. See how you, you die daily. You're already dead. Daily. 32. If after the manner of men, I have fought beast at Ephesus, which advantage advantage it me if the dead rise not. Mm -hmm. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Read on. 
See, yeah. don't let no evil communications corrupt your manners. Be not deceived. And that's what my people are doing now, letting others deceive them. Their good manners being deceived. That the that the Yahweh been Yahweh put this spirit in everybody. You can you're gonna be living back home. You don't have to be here. He's still here. He's in you. He's in you. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh Ben Yahweh. He's in you. Don't you have his name? You are Yahweh too. Read verse 34. Awake to righteousness. That's what you need to do. You need to awake to righteousness. And sin not. Why? For some have not the knowledge of God. They don't have the knowledge of God. I don't know why they put some here. It should be a lot. They have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Read verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? See, now here we go with the body. I mean, I just saw my cousin 10 years ago go in the ground. So he come back, what body going to come back in? You fool, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except to die. Hmm. Read verse 37. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. Not that body that shall be. But bear grain. But bear grain it, of what? It made chance of wheat. The same wheat from Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. And the other grain would be the barley. Mm -hmm. Read it, see. Or of some other grain. The barley. Mm -hmm. But what? God giveth it a body as it, it pleased It him. is the wheat and the grain. Eat. It is the seed. Mm -hmm. He giveth it a body as it pleased him. What it? The soul. As it pleased him. And to every seed his own body. You don't have no one else's body but your own. That means when you see someone in time past that looks like you, it's you. In the same body. It's the same persons. And what? All flesh is not the same flesh. It's not. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Forty. There are also celestial bodies. Celestial bodies that come from heaven with me. And there are also bodies terrestrial. terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one. And the glory of the of terrestrial the is another. Is another. You got it? Now, get ready for a shock. I told you, you've been here before. You're not the only ones. Don't you see? Go back to the Elijah. Go back to that. Go back to that. Do you see that? I'm also known as Elijah. It's taken up. Never was seen again. No ending of life. Went up. Right? Now go to Acts chapter 1. I will come again. Acts chapter 1. Start at verse 7. Read from 7 to 11. Got it? Acts chapter 1. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. What verse is that? Verse 7. Go up to 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, mm -hmm. saying, Lord, what? what? Wouldst thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You want to know? I mean, it's destroyed. Are you going to restore it? It's been destroyed. So what did he say? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons mm -hmm. which the Father hath put in his own power. Whoa. <laughs> not for you to know. The Father put that in his own power. See how the Christ speaking of the Father? Mm -hmm. Read on. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea mm -hmm. and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, what happened? While they beheld, he was taken up. And uh, they cloud. Taken up? No one elevated. <laughs> it wasn't a crane. And what happened? A cloud? And a cloud. Something came down that looks like clouds. 
from above. And what happened? And a cloud received him out of their sight. Disappeared. Today they call them UFOs, U.S. government, NORAD, Canada, the United States. UFOs. And what else? And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, uh -huh. behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Christ, which mm. is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Really? The same way? Now go to Hebrews chapter 13. Look at verse 8. I believe that's the verse. Hebrews chapter 13. Is it verse 8? Christ, the same yesterday and to the what? Yesterday. The what? The Christ. Is it what? The same. The same. We're looking for a white boy to come back with blonde hair and blue eyes. It's the same one. He must have the same wisdom too. And it's beat the same criteria and portfolio that my officer said in that interview. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a goit, huh? A joint, sagacious, huh? Clever. Clever. Be able to take the dogma, mm -hmm. have the ift, can take words and turn one word and one letter into another. Mm -hmm. Another, right? And and read it. Read it. Read it, read it, read it again. Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Don't change. Right? Go to uh, Malachi, read chapter 3, verse 6. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. <coughs> For I am the Lord. I change not. Excuse me? I change not. Therefore, Isn't that what scripture says? Yes, Therefore what? Ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So what's this theory of he putting the spirit in people? <laughs> Everybody, they deliver themselves. Go to Joel chapter 2. And look at verse 28. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. <clears throat> let's see, let's get this cleared up now with the spirit of pour out spirit upon all flesh. Read that. Let's see if we can clear this up because it's got to be a mystery in that. And it shall come to pass afterward yeah. that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, uh -huh. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Okay. Your uh, okay, I can I can do with that. Because they're gonna prophesy of things they already heard. You got it? They won't be prophets, but they'll have prophecies in their mind that they heard, and they're going to they're going to prophesy to other people. You know, like, hey, the world coming to an end. Okay, we know that. That's prophecy. <laughs> what else? Your old men shall dream dreams. See, the old men from the old school, they're going to dream about getting to heaven. They're going to dream dreams. See, they have dreams about getting to heaven. Mm -hmm. They're going to dream dreams. It doesn't say they're going to have dreams. They're going to dream dreams that they were taught all their lives about getting where they're going to go. They're going to dream dreams. It'll only be a dream. You know what a dream is? It's a fantasy. And what else? Your young men shall see visions. And someone going to come along and show them visions of the young men. They're going to show them the visions. Visualize visions. I mean, they must be able to see. Even in perception, they must be able to see. And what else? And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pull out my spirit. And they are under, they are under the impression that my uh, pulled the spirit upon them that before he left, now they're going to deliver themselves back to where they come from. But how do they do that and get around verse 32? Just read verse 32. Just go, just go right to it. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I don't see how that can be when they're going to be pouring out the spirit and the spirit. I mean, they gotta, although he poured out his spirit, if it's according to what they're saying, they deliver themselves. How are they going to deliver themselves? They don't, know, they don't know his name. Oh, they think, oh, they think it's Yahweh. Some even think it's Yodhi Wafe. 
What else? For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. They even said that uh, Yahweh, but Yahweh said nobody coming after him. Go to Ezekiel chapter 34. And let's see. Read verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11. For thus said the Lord God. Who said it? The Lord God. Okay. Behold, right. I, even I. That's one. Even another one. But what? Will both search my They sheep. have to come and explain that to me. <laughs> They must come explain the English word that's spelled from left to right, B-O-T-H, to me. Mm -hmm. Both search my sheep and do what? Seek, them, seek out. them out. And do what? As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places. Oh, so even as he leaves, there's another one on the other side of both that's going to deliver the sheep. Right. Mm -hmm. What else it says? And will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. That hadn't happened before 2007. Mm -hmm. And I see both there. But you know, they're not going to believe. And I'm not here with a convincing testimony to try and make them believe. Now, close it with this, and then we're going to show you something. Go to John chapter 3. And read verses 14, 15 and 16. It's all like something that maybe I should read. That's, that's what it sounds like. Go to John chapter 3. I'm going to make sure we get every word of this. John chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 5. Verily. See one verily is bigger than another verily. 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 That's both. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Hmm. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, as we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said that said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. I mean, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Confused. Well, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? I mean, you're supposed to be a master of the elder of Israel. You don't know these things. Well, verily, my arm said, and verily, I say unto thee, we speak. See, we. You see it? Mm -hmm. We speak that we do. No. And testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If, I'm, if I have told you earthly things, you would believe not. And you believe not. So how shall, I, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man has ascended up into heaven. No man up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Even Moses, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish who have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. With that said, I told you, you're not the only ones that have been here before. Others have too. And you think the Gentiles know that? Those of Europe knows it. You just didn't know. So let me show you something for the first time in your life. Go back to YouTube. Let me show you something for the first time in your life that's going to freak you out. It should. 
if you're not freaked out, you must be a robot. <laughs> so if you're watching this, I'm going to pretend like it's a button, it's a square button on the tube that asks you, are you a robot? Just check it and say, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a robot. And then maybe one say, I'm not a robot, but click on that one. But go back to, you got YouTube? Go back to the library and you're going to see something that says uh, right there next to the interview. Click on that. Right? You can turn it up. You can leave it up. Take a look at that. History from striking similarities to, to downright uncanny resemblances. Go to the beginning. Take a look at this. And tell me what you think. Have you ever seen a celebrity and thought they must have a twin from the past? In today's video, we're revealing 40 plus celebrities who look exactly like people from history. From striking. First of all, they're not people from history. It's them. The devil is full of deception. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, full of deception. It is them. You be the judge for yourself and tell me, you tell me if it's not them. Even if it's a woman who was a woman that came back as a man or a man that turned into a woman, the same soul. Go ahead, play it. Similarities to downright uncanny resemblances. These modern stars seem to have historical doppelgangers that will leave you speechless. Get ready to be amazed as we dive into these incredible lookalikes across time.
doesn't draw a midget. The same size. The same size. Thanks for watching. We hope you were as amazed as yeah. I hope you, I hope you were amazed. <laughs> that wasn't Hollywood. That was celestial wood. <laughs> That's real. Mm. Uh, as I was saying, you were here before. Same souls. No, you're not the only ones. And we want to say to all of those who join us tonight. I hope you learned something. I suggest you very. I very strongly suggest you get here to Miami. Uh, it's just heating up. We are now into the 70th year, and things are going to just deteriorate as the as the time as the day by now. Or have a port strike going on? Mm -hmm. You see, the last one was 1977. Well, it wouldn't end of the world yet. True, right. So they recovered. My Allah allowed them to recover. You are in the last days. This is uh the chapter of Matthew 24 that's being manifested right mm -hmm. now in your face. So I suggest you come to Miami. We'll find a place for you before it's too late. With that said, we're going to say two out of those who joined us, and we uh, that concludes our eight days of our observance of the Feast of Tabernacles, 6,027. We're going to have the ninth day tomorrow, and the tenth, and the next week, and the day after that, the year after that, and until we get to forever. That's how long we're going to be doing this forever. With that said, stay safe if you can. Stock up if you can. Shalom alaikum. Alaikum shalom. Alaikum Yeah. What we're going to do right now is we're going to pause here for a moment so that you can hear that recording that was recorded by who they called Yahweh ben Yahweh back in 1992 while he was incarcerated. I made up my mind on last night that I'm going into my secret closet and pick up my holy robes that I laid aside and put in my secret closet to come and get you. And I've been walking among you without my holy robes for 12 years. Well, I'm picking them up and putting them on. And I'm going into the box and take out my starry crown and I'm putting it on my head. And I'm into the box and picking up my scepter and it's in my right hand. And I'm going to sit on my holy throne in true holiness. And that's the only way I'm going to walk. And if you ever hope to be in my presence, you will certainly have to be an angel. Because you may want it.
and that's a fact. Because I'm definitely going to Galilee. And for you who think that's a physical place, you still have a serious problem. You need a new man real bad. You need to get rid of the, the deceitful lust real bad. Because it's a new mindset where I live, where I'm going, and where you're going to have to meet me. Am I going to get out of here physically? Of course I am. Of course I am. I've made up my mind to do so. And because I've made up my mind to do so, I am. And I know some of you will get so excited, and you'll want to prepare for me to come home. And you can just see yourself now getting all this dinner ready, etc. And I may not be there. You see, the real feast is not physical. And none of you will be able to deceive me with a physical feast. In fact, I'm not going to allow an unclean person to fix a meal for me anyway. Some of you think unclean is when you're on the issue, I know. Some of you think unclean means when your hands haven't been washing your dirt, your physical clothes are soiled. No, 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 no. The old mindset is unclean. Look at how 